Generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is a botanically brewed Victorian lemonade. Very potent indeed. It's a very strong beverage. Either way, welcome back to the game in the previous episode. We were looking at the Magpie Technically Version 2. It was the airship here and it was all about the Wasp Killer Marines. This was the Redemption build where we made it just a lot better so this goes above drops down these wasp killer marines and with their exoskeletons and minigun they basically clean up everything inside of well whatever they happen to drop on in this episode it's not going to be a airship build instead it's going to be a land ship thing and the reason for that is if we go to designs here we've only got a few of these things so we have the badger which uses what will again be the focus of our attention the aerial torpedoes more on that in a moment We've got the Bullfrog, which has got two aerial torpedoes, which are like separate. They're just one launch thing, but also got rockets, but again, quite cheap. We've got the Elk, which is just a great all-round vessel. It's just got weapons all over it, good defences, good armour. It's not entirely... Uh, well, it's not going to be winning any races, but it gets where it needs to be. This Fox here, it's got the Suspendium Ray. But basically, if we go through, even the biggest thing we've got... Well, the most expensive is this with the Suspendium Disruptor. But even the biggest thing we have, which is the Elk, it's still not got a huge amount of weaponry. I want to make a siege vessel and we've done these in the past but again focusing on the aerial torpedo mainly because it's just my favorite weapon in the game just such a cool thing let's go over to the aerial torpedo here and we can see what it is like so it says aerial torpedoes move slowly but devastate anything they hit they cannot be fired at close range so there's the minimum range and the arc of fire is poor but that's not really a big concern of ours the max mark your range is 1500 meters but realistically we're just going to launch it at the back and it'll take its time to get wherever it needs to go and then hit the target so we're going to use as i said these aerial torpedoes and i want to make a vessel that uses a good amount of them so if we go to open design the the, the most we've got is we've got four on that thing i think we need to probably double that up that is the main goal here so we're going to have something like that but furthermore we want to go even <laughs> even further down the route of aerial torpedoes and use some aircraft with the torpedo bombers and yes there are torpedo bombers in the game so there you go now torpedo bombers is a light plane that could launch a single aerial torpedo at its point before returning to rearm Air aircraft in this game are, are curious i i really like them but just one flak cannon can take out your entire aircraft so it's it's not ideal but anyway let's go ahead and we're going to put a big row of them here this is going to be i should point out exceptionally expensive uh, and i just want to say yep i understand <laughs> we know it's going to be expensive now but this is how we're gonna we're gonna go with it one two three four i think a fifth one is probably in order and yes we noticed that we've got the rockets and then all of the planes in front of it so that means they'll be launching with the Aerial torpedoes coming past them. Is that a good idea? In reality, no. It doesn't make, however, any mechanical difference in the game, and I just like the idea of this sort of this sort of layout. Anyway, another couple of aerial torpedoes will be also placed in Oh, I was gonna place it in I was gonna place them like sort of there, and that's that is about right. Okay, so that is the rough outline. This is gonna be very expensive and very heavy. And, well, that's that's the end of that chat. Okay, over to some resources here, and we're going to go for ammo, 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 and indeed, you might have guessed it, yes, ammo over here as well. Let's just move this forward a little bit, and the ammo store can go there and connect this up, and there we are. So, this is going to be not very manoeuvrable. It's not going to be very... Well, it's not going to be anything other than slow, ponderous, and hopefully deadly against any structure it comes across. Whether or not that's the case, well, we're going to find out. So over to our fire extinguisher here. I'm going to put fire extinguisher like that, and that technically connects up everything. So the cost at the moment, before we even have any way to make it move or crew it, is just under 3,000 generic units of currency. And the armor is still wood. So this is going to be expensive. Okay, so let's see how we're going to move this thing. Well, I guess we could use, if we wanted to, and indeed we do, some probably... Well, we're going to use tracks, but it depends what sort of tracks are we going to go with. 
Now, I do like the idea of having tracks like that and have it suspended up a little bit. But that means we'd have to have this as one big corridor. That's not too much of a problem. We can do that. In fact, let's go over to maybe... Mm. Do I want to use those or do I want to use like a big set of tracks? Or why not both? So we've got large tracks. So if the large tracks were here, that would be... Hmm. No, it would have to be something like that, wouldn't they? to be on about the same level, and even then, I don't think they are on the same level, but I, I like the look of that, and have little tracks across here. Okay, that's that's interesting, if nothing else. Let's place that in there, and, I mean, I don't know exactly the distance between these. I mean, that feels about right. Let's have a one, two, three, four, five, six... No, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six f full blocks before this. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, actually, so if we go one, two, one. Is that about right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, there we are. Let's go ahead and have some, well, we need some basic structural stuff. Could go with a corridor. A corridor straight across here. That is possible. Or oh, just a deck. Just straight up, just deck. Let me go over to overlays and pathing here. So we'll have to get rid of that bit. I'm just going to run this right across, like so. So that connects that up. And all of these, which is good. I will have another, another fire point. I tend to use fire points quite a bit. And that's technically connected everything up. Okay, yep, that seems to work. We need to make it move, so we need coal. So over to resources, and I'm just going to go with a small coal store. And we can probably remove a bit of the deck. So remove a bit of the deck there, and indeed there. Or can, actually, does coal store, does it go down? It does have a down bit. Okay. So I'm moving three in preparation for that to go in there, that to go in there, and actually we'll put it the other side. One there, one there, one there. Because again, I want a fire point, fire point, fire point. Okay, there we go. You can cross along here so we could have really shifted it down a bit but if this gets blown up then i like the idea of two two sections i have no doubt this thing is going to split in half yeah this is going to snap like a kick cat isn't it this is not <laughs> in the middle it's just going to disappear oh the chocolate confectionery is also available so what we'll do is add in a bit more coal over here when i say a bit more coal we'll add some amount of coal cargo bay Ah, yeah, uh, we don't need those. So, coal will go in uh, maybe there, and that should be fine, like so. And, well, we need crew, we need supply hats spy hatches, and we need... Uh, what do we need? Do we want a fire point? Do we want medic bay? I mean, it, it seems reasonable, a vessel this size. We want... The speed's pretty good, look at that, 215. <laughs> okay, it might, it might actually be quite quick, yeah. Not when we start putting armor on it anyway, which, well, we'll come back to that later. So we got our aircraft. Aircraft command deck. Give detailed commands to aircraft. I do like the idea of one of those. So we're probably going to put one in. Aircraft maintenance bay. Hmm. Repairing and rearming aircraft. Aircraft are repaired 100% faster. Aircraft are rearmed 25% faster. Yeah. Like the idea of that, so we'll probably put one of those in. Put one in, say, I'm just, I'm just going to put it in there for now. In terms of maybe structural corridor. So, corridor, corridor with ladder. And do you notice there's all these gaps? That is a deliberate decision. I don't just want it to be in a big brick. Although I fear it's probably going to turn out that way. As is often the case. Machine shop, that would be very useful. 
I will put that in there. A fire point is probably going to be a good idea at some point, at some stage. Hmm. Maybe in the middle, if I was to pull this back to there, and a fire point to there, that would work out. And then another corridor with ladder there. Good pathing. And, I mean, sack it. We've got, I mean, do we have actually, actually, do I have enough ammo is the question. How much do these use? Aerial torpedoes. Two ammo per shot. How much does this hold? A hundred. Ah, oh, so we're only getting... We're only getting 25 shots a piece. From each block. No. I think, I think that's enough ammo. I think it's fine. Anyway, steel cargo door. We'll put in the back. Slight reduced structural integrity due to large size. Yeah, uh, there's no... Oh, keels are in the game. There you go, I'm going to put a keel in, just to <laughs> give it added structural integrity. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, that's that's okay. I mean, ideally it would be further down, but it, it's in. We've got... What do we have? What do we... What, do, what haven't we got? We can't give commands and we can't crew it. And also, I would like, I think, Observation Door would be nice. I just, I mean, it just, it just sits, doesn't it? It just sits well on there. Yeah, we'll have that. Telescope. We'll put one in. Does it stack? It doesn't stack with Telescope and Wall Deck Telescope, but does stack with Observation Dome. Yes. Does it does this stack with crow's nest? Doesn't stack with crow's nest. Does that? That stacks with crow's nest, but that doesn't. The observation dome. So the observation observation dome is just a better version of the crow's nest. So that th those two together should be acceptable. Okay. And I think then sick bear. We'll have a sick bear. Right. With that done, Let's give commands to it. Command center. Massive command center suitable for leading a fleet. Increases command of all ships by 30%. Mm, not really. Don't really need that. Uh, you know, it's a big, big downer that if that blows up, we're not good. We're going to lose the aircraft command deck. I'm going to move that up. I'm going to move that up, I think. Yes, indeed. And connect it up like so. And probably like so as well. Oh. It's not all mutually accessible. Oh, there we go. Cannot give commands to the ship. Why? I'm going to have to have more than one keel in, am I? <laughs> I think so. There we go. Double keel. Right. It says can't give commands to ship, but I've got a bridge. It's probably because I've got no crew. So, crewman quarters. One, two, three. Uh, how many is wrecking... Ooh, it's wrecking, reckoning 52 crew. And there we go. Crew 72, recommended 75. I mean, we can potentially put more in. I mean, it is just a big brick at the end. <laughs> right, so a lot of the places like here where I've got the ladders, I'm just going to put in crewman bunks. That just, like, slots in there quite nicely. So where is one of those? I know that was one of them, wasn't it? Crewman bunks. And there. And I think there was one around there. Corridor with ladder. We're already overcrewed. And we are understaffed. No, we're overstaffed. That's actually not a problem then. So I could probably remove one of those and one of those. And one of those, that would take it to what it's recommending. Put a keel in the top. <laughs> it just seems to be a really bad design, putting a keel up there, though. I like the idea of the keel. Oh, the keel across there would be nice. Mm. No. No. Can we rotate a keel? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Oh, what's the best course of action for this one? I mean, it's probably just 
dump it up here realistically. We can we can do that. It's I mean it it sits in there. It's far from ideal. Oh no, because no, because we can't even get access to that. Right, we have to have maybe that further forward and that in like so. So there we are. That is what it looks like. Deliberately a bit of a mismatch, but it's in. So it's five grand. What about armor? It's currently wooden wall. We don't want that. What if we were to make it a stone wall? Oh yeah, that can't move. What about a brick wall? We can make a brick. <laughs> we could actually make it a brick. Hmm. What would that afford us? HP of 40, absorb 2 blast and 1 piercing. If it was steel, HP of 50, 16... Oh, yeah, it's going to be steel, isn't it? There we go. Speed is still alright, actually. Heavy steel armour is even better. And I don't particularly mind splitting it into heavy to steel armour. Massive stone wall, shell armour, canvas, reinforced wooden wall. Let's go with heavy steel. I, by the way, I should point out, in a campaign setting... This thing is highly, highly limited. As in, the technology required to build it is... Well, it's not really there. <laughs> You're going to have to spend a lot of time unlocking the technology for this. So there's stained glass that you can place in. Stained glass windows. I'm just going to put a couple in because we can. Just to give it a little extra... What's it actually look like? It doesn't look terrible. Oh, there's tall steel glass windows as well. <laughs> so we're going to go for solid shapes. And naturally it's going to be something like that. And I'm going to maybe put that in there. This is just going to be solid filler. Put on maybe that. We could... If we were to put that there, yeah, another another way around, that's okay. So I just want to fill up these a little bit. To put domes in. <laughs> What's that actually look like? It looks weird. Yeah, what a surprise. So we'll remove those, and I'm just going to put in... What would the spikes look like? We can't place that there. It's, it's got something. It's got something, but it's just not. It's not there, and I don't think we. I don't think we really need it. So we'll put them like that, and just have a gap of two. That's okay. And then, I, I mean, that's it, really. I like. It, I like that's pretty curved on the back. It's got a bit of sort of nerd hunch, but you know, whatever. It's in. And let's have a look at it then. Commands every 10 seconds. Cost is 6,786 generic units of currency. Speed 122 kilometers an hour. Crew 75 of 75. Call 86 of God knows. I don't, <laughs> don't actually know if that's enough. Water and repair and everything seems to be fine. Let's go for explosion damage. Oh, let's just not look at that. And yeah, horizontal drag is actually... No, it's not very maneuverable going down. We can't do the Adama maneuver with it. I think we'll go with... Ah, oh, that'll do. That'll be fine. So, we need a name for it. So, we'll go with... Um, we'll call it the Rhino. Let's save the design. Oh, we have a Rhino. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Right, right. We'll probably have to... We'll probably have to rename that. Um, hippo. So, there is the Hippo. What's it like? Well, let's find out. Let's go to leave and combat, and we're going to have a land ship of the hippo. It is absolutely massive. It'll gonna, it's going to go back there. And as for the building, we're going to put in probably just something... I mean, let, right, we're going to start off exceptionally unfair and go up from from that point. So we'll have a day fight here. And, well, we are going to start. I will immediately tell the planes to land. We do not want these things taking off just yet. I want the aerial torpedoes to fire, which they very much are. Let's just see what it's like going forward in a second. There's all the torpedoes going out. We're going to go with aimed fire. And 
already I would probably like to give it commands a little bit quicker. There's the shots out from the out from the tower. Looks like the, that guy up there is going to have a bad time. Oh, not, just missed him. That one hit. Hit. Good hits, good hits, good hits. And you know what? Normal aircraft operation. Resume. So let's see what these are like. Immediately, they're really quick. Oh, that looks impressive. With them flying there. Oh, there's a torpedo. Oh, even better. Right. So it does. it's not having to fly up above. Wow. Okay. Let me just pause it for a moment. I want to go back and see what sort of damage we're looking at. Outside view. Well, they haven't even broken the stained glass window yet. So, I mean, I'm feeling fairly confident on that one. So I'm telling them to move forward and can, yes, confirm it is slow. <laughs> it was a bit... Yeah, a bit ponderous. Okay, let's go back to a fight. This time, we're going to add in land ship, the hippo. Excuse me. Come on, there we go. And once again, it goes at the back here. Add a building and the orc. So I'll rotate them round. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sack it. Seven, eight. Okay, so they're overpointed. I don't think we can win. I just think that the aerial torpedoes and these planes, I just I just think that the cost isn't there. The cost ratio is off. Start the fight. I'm leaving on I'm gonna go to rapid fire. Just just yeet. <laughs> so there's the torpedoes out. Oh, and look at that, they're missing missing a lot. Them torpedoes are so good. I think I'm going to go to normal fire. So the torpedoes are taking out quite nicely the front one. And the front one's going to explode. There we go. Let's just stop for a moment. We'll go back over to here, outside view. We are, take a pe we are taking a peppering. But the aircraft are already rearmed and are on their way. And there we go. Oh, look at that. It's, a, it's, a, it's so quick. They're so quick, them aerial torpedoes. How many planes have we lost? One, two, three, four. Oh, five. We've still got five. Good grief, that noise. Oh, yeah, we are losing. It looks like we're doing okay until you actually come over here and realize that... That's not good. So yeah, see that? The aircraft is being repaired. Having the repair bay at the back here is a mistake. It needs to be moved further forward, closer to the planes. Who would have thought? <laughs> so already we've taken out one of the towers. We've very much chipped away at the other two front ones, but any second we're going to hear explosions from the left-hand side. And that'll be us exploding I can already hear it go yeah yep it has split in half exactly as we had expected okay well there's not much we can do now other than rely on whatever's left which is admittedly not much how are our planes faring that one's just crashing on the ground that one's not faring well at all so we took out three and the rest's not so much we must admit defeat yes I think that is the case okay all right I reckon the hippo could do with the odd change remove these little sections there Reason for that is I'm going to go to Command and Crew and I'm going to make it more expensive by putting in a cockpit. And the reason for that is it, if this splits in half, at least we've got the commands and now we can command it within every eight seconds. That also helps. I'm going to remove that section and put in a crewman bunk. There we go. Oh, we need actually more. We need more supply hatches. Wouldn't have thought that. But that's fine. We can can indeed resolve that. It will be in resources. And we have got a reinforced supply hatch. It's just a steel supply hatch. And slightly reduced structural integrity again. 
I mean, might as well just remove all the keels. How much are the keels? Oh, they're actually. It says press N for variant. Oh yeah, <laughs> the the size of the keels increases. I wonder how much. I wonder if we can remove those and remove that. Put that in. No, slightly reduced structural integrity once again. Although, I reckon that would suffice. Yes, it would. Okay, so that's now in. Mm, the repair bay. This needs to be closer to here. It really does. Let's look at pathing. Because it's along and then down, or it's it's quite away away from it. Ideally, it would be underslung here. I mean, there's nothing to say that I can't put it that way. But, yeah, it's a bit of a redesign. Let me just save that for now, then, and we'll overwrite that. Again, I, I'm not I'm not confident that this is just going to win anything, because it's just so expensive. Let's go with the landship once again, and we'll put that in here. There we go. And we're going to give ourselves a fighting chance. Bit of a fighting chance by adding in probably probably the same thing again. We'll put the orc in. The orc is a good design though, so I mean I'm not two, three, four, five. There's five. It's was yeah. The orc's a good design, but it's just uh, yeah. There's no shame in losing to it. But points wise, we are still how many points over are we? like two and a half thousand points yeah it's like two and a half thousand points so all of that incoming as you saw there is just like too much of an issue unless we get lucky early on I mean there's all of those torpedoes bar one missed and the other one just was a bit of a splash damage at the front so we'll see if we get a good opening volley which we have not. Actually, the follow-ups are good. The follow-ups are good. Right, the first tower is pretty much gone. The first tower is definitely gone. So we'll target the next one. Ideally, you want to target the middle, because then it'll shoot either side. So I think I'll probably do that. Because if it misses, it's going to go there or there. It's either going to overshoot or undershoot. But the problem with that is the aircraft have to get closer. How are we faring? Actually faring better than I expected. Just pause it for a moment. Looks like... Oh, it looks like that one's gone as well. Target that one then. I love how quick and precise those airdrop torpedoes can be. And there's another one gone. Pretty much. Yep, that's not pretty much gone. And now... We're going to be targeting this next one. Hmm. That's good. Yeah. You know what? After seeing how effective those torpedo planes can be, how many have we lost? None. That one's a bit stuck, admittedly. And we are very much on fire. We should be able to put that fire out, one would expect. You can hear the hissing. That's going to reach the ammo store. It is in the ammo store. Water's going down. And that is really burning. I don't think that's going to stop. That fire is not getting put out. It's in the coal store. It's in the ammo store. There's going to be an explosion at some point, And I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. You can see the water going down. But it doesn't sound... I don't know what they're using, using the water for. <laughs> I mean, it's it's they've stopped this fire spreading, and that's the best I can really hope for. No, no, it's, it's spreading further. Right, okay, that's going to blow up at some point. However, we should have victory sooner rather than later. If nothing else, the front will survive, and that's pretty much it. All glory belongs to us. We are victorious. Yes, you also have free heating. Okay. One more combat. Let's go with... Actually, that was 
Ooh, that's that's very much desert. Let's go for Oasis. Yeah, we'll go with the. Oh, I like the Oasis in the day. There's the night time. There's your dawn, dusk. <laughs> There's your sandstorm. So we'll have that. Okay, landship, hippo. It goes there. And building the orc. Let's try the equal amount of points again. We might get lucky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're overpointed by oh, very little. Six, eight, two, three, as opposed to six, eight, eight, zero. It's close as you're going to get within, well, with, with being reasonable. So there is the, uh, there's the launch. And here's the myriad of shots coming into us. I am going to target the middle one because the first volley will hopefully do enough damage to the first for the first one that we should be all right because all of these are coming in for the first one. Now we're just launching the second. I don't know why it's uh yeah. There we go. There's all the aircraft rearming. I just want I want to watch them. I want to want to see them take off. Come on. One. Two, three, four, five, and there they go. Yes, that looks good. And really quickly, I think the front one's pretty much dead. But I can hear explosions to the left. Yes, I can. Yeah, we've already lost. Half of our arsenal is gone, and it keeps exploding. So... Yeah, it is possible that this thing is... Oh, no. No, it, oh, it likes the Death Star itself. Yep, yeah. okay. And it's very susceptible to fire. Admittedly, we do have a lot of the ammo stars and coal star around. Yeah, so that's pretty much gone. If it splits off, so if that snaps there... Oh, look at that, that's on fire as well. But now this is snapped off, but we can still control it. Because we have got the, the cockpits in there. But again, on fire, and then it goes up again. Wow. Okay. I can still hear explosions. Yeah. Just It's just a little bit too much for it. Just a little bit too much. Alright. Well, we'll leave that fight there, and we'll probably leave that there for now. That's been with their ships conquer the skies. Overall, effectiveness is... It's not where it needs to be. But what's the way to fix it? Well, it is the explosion damage that's a problem. So when these go up, it also ignites that one, which I actually thought we had the right, the right spacing. So what I'm probably best off doing is having two gap of two, two gap of two, two, and, and do it that way. Another way of doing it would be one, then a gap of two and move it that way. But I think having it in blocks of two works. The problem is when that blows up, it takes up so much around it. These aren't really a problem when these go on fire. Th th those, that one is. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. So I'd have to make it even taller <laughs> and more uh, put more spacing in it. That would mean, though, if we had more space... I could probably move the aircraft repair bay to here. But honestly, if I was going to do that again, I genuinely think that I would run just a massive row of torpedo bombers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Have that. And just have a underslung carriage of tracks. Maintenance bay, aircraft command deck, a couple of weapons on the front. Job done. Not very tanky, but the cost infinitely cheaper. If you would like to see that build, let me know. I'm probably going to make it anyway, so <laughs> I'll probably end up recording it. Either way, let me know what you think on both the Hippo. Comments, suggestions, changes, additions, alterations, variants, 
or even just different suggestions for any builds that you would like to see. Let me know, and as always, we will leave it there for now. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, and generic partings.